Hello, my fellow hunters, and welcome to Monster Hunter World. And for a lot of you, I do mean that literally here. With the release of the game just hours away, we're going to have a flood of fresh meat enter the world of Monster Hunter. And that's just awesome, especially as a veteran, because it's going to be super useful having a load of flailing meat shields distracting the monster while I safely sharpen my weapon over here. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Then again, that is countered by my beta experiences that went along the lines of... Wait! The monster's asleep! Uh, if you go... Please, barrel ball! Barrels! Do it! Do it! Oh! Oh, come! Come on! It's so much damage! It's fine, you didn't know! But that aside, whatever that was, I think I can speak for all the longtime players when I say it is beyond awesome and exciting to see so much new player interest in this game we've been playing forever. It's it's truly a I, I never thought this day would come moment when we see that World is likely the monster hunter game that finally propels it out of its niche little corner and into the mainstream in the western market. It's it's a good time to be a Monster Hunter fan. And I would love to at least try and make as many of your new player experiences as good as possible. And to that end, I want to talk about and discuss my recommendation for how you go about playing Monster Hunter World. Because you only get your first time once and the monsters aren't going to be gentle. This is a topic then that... A lot of you will probably have an opinion on, especially if you've played the game before, and I would love to hear it in the comments. I, I love a good debate, and it's the topic of single player versus multiplayer in this game. But more specifically, what do I mean? Well, I'm not about to sit here and be all totally elitist and be like, well, if you don't play it this way, you're not a true monster hunter. No, of course not. It's a game. If what you are doing is fun, you keep doing it. But I, I'd like to make it more fun, if that makes sense. And I'm going to start with a rule that I think that you should try and stick to pretty rigidly if you can. And that rule is don't fight any monster that you have not killed yet in a multiplayer situation. And yes, I realize the total irony in the background footage for this being a two-man bow hunt, but I, I wasn't planning on making this video until a lot of people asked me my opinion on how a new hunter should operate, and this was this was the footage that I, I mean, it's that or a trail, I'm sorry. And that might be a little bit divisive, because you might have a group of friends that have all got it, and you want to go through the story together and fight everything for the first time as a group, and look, if that's your plan, go for it. But if you at all can, don't fight something as like a four-man team before you've beat it solo, because you will lose out on such a special experience that you only get once per monster. You will lose out on the first delicate poking and prodding, seeing what it does, learning its movements, having this beautiful ballet dance of death twixt you and this majestic, ferocious creature where you only have yourself, your wits, and your skills to rely on. And that moment after a hard-fought battle, after multiple tries, after carts, after tears, sweat, victories, excitement, and despair, that quest complete dropped down happens and that death animation plays and you lean back and let out a <sighs> yes it's magical and it's addictive and for me that simply doesn't come from four people beating on a monster chain CCing it chain flinching it chain knocking it over and just kind of mashing it into the ground now don't get me wrong at the super high end when you're fighting like double apex rajang and they're one shotting everyone left and right it's still bloody brutal and satisfying to beat it even as a four man but fighting your first low rank rathalos with four people don't rob yourself of that experience. Don't, don't do it. 
That's all I want to put across. I'm not about to tell you play the whole game single player. I'm not about to tell you avoid multiplayer at all costs. No, multiplayer Monster Hunter is a wondrous experience in its own right. It's fun. There's shenanigans. It's really cool to do silly tactics that need that many of you to speed farm creatures to have these awesome scenarios play out that don't happen in single player. Hell, for me and a lot of people, multiplayer just is the end game of Monster Hunter. It's what I and many other people spend most of our time doing because that's where the fun is at once you've kind of done everything once at least from my perspective because that's when you want to kick it up you want to farm you want to min max you want to play with your hunter friends you want to play with random people online make some friends see how the hunts go down have some hilarious failures some crazy successes and it's it's supremely satisfying the multiplayer endgame fighting the hardest creatures with your most badass hardened group of hunters you can get together that is a really memorable unique experience in of itself and it's something I would totally recommend you go and try and grab onto especially with world making it easier and better than ever before being able to just fire up a flare and summon in any hunters that are nearby and want to help out having a 16 player lobby where you can arm wrestle and go on different quests in different groups joining in and out of quests as you please and just having all this awesome multiplayer support we've wanted for so long yeah it's gonna be a fantastic social multiplayer experience but don't have your first experience of a monster be that because it will kind of ruin it for you. There will be times where you get your ass kicked, where you fail a quest, where you try again and you fail again, and you just can't beat the current monster you have to kill to progress. Your first wall. Everyone remembers their first wall. Mine was uh, Diablos in Monster Hunter 1, and I, I still... I still have massive... Massive post trauma stress disorder. Whenever I hear that, yeah, right, that was the worst example of a Diablos roar. But that piercing shrill, it sends shivers down me even to this day. And if I just got three people and helped them beat it down and kill killed it and cleared it that way, well, I wouldn't have that emotional connection and that story. So it will be tempting when you first get your wall to just get three people in and kill it and get it out the way. You think the next one won't be as hard, but no! Don't give in, never surrender. Try and try and try. And then when you do kill it, when you just beat it down, ecstasy is what your reward will be. And look, I don't want this to come off as sort of strict and almost preachy as it has been. I, I do want to stress you don't need to be totally like evangelical about this but it's really sad when you're playing online fighting an elder dragon and this guy keeps getting hit by everything and he, he keeps carting for some reason and he's wearing really good equipment and presumably if he's on this quest with you he's got experience of the game and then you find out that he's never actually fought it solo because he's just killed everything in groups and progressed that way and you know sure he still enjoyed the game and it's a valid way to do it if that's what you want but but there's something missing there do you not see why that's a little bit I mean, almost sad, kind of like a, oh, dude, kind of moment. And I, I don't want that person to be you guys, at least not without you knowing this context and making the choice for it to be. And look, you can completely ignore all of this. You can be like, yeah, I kind of see what you're getting, but no, I'm going to play it with my mates. It's going to be a blast. Yeah, you fucking go for it. Enjoy Monster Hunter, my friend. But I will just say that I don't think anybody's lesser for not playing the game like this. Of course I don't. That's crazy. But I will just say to me, it is a unique experience fighting a new monster solo. And it's an experience you lock yourself out of if you have prior knowledge of the monster from a multiplayer setting where you kind of bulldoze through it as a group and didn't really get the appreciation for it that a one-on-one -on -one dance of death would give you. Because a multiplayer hunts the same the 1st, the 10th, the 20th. It gets more efficient, sure, and sometimes something unexpected happens, but it's not like it's a crazy, oh my god thing. 
even the first time because you can kind of get through something you've not seen before by a sheer weight of the onslaught four people can bring. Because remember, there's four hunters for 2.6 times health. And, well, you can see how that does make things a bit easier. I would argue that objectively... Monster Hunter is at its easiest when it's four of you versus a monster. And I think you could actually make an argument for two man being the hardest because there's two of you for 2.6 times health in world, whereas before there was scaling based on the number of hunters. At least I think there was. But either way, the point stands. I would just highly recommend that you, wherever possible, even if you make a second character to do it, have a solo hunt against every given monster at least once until you kill it before kind of just kicking its ass with a zerg party of four hunters. And that's really all I got to bring. I, I would love some comments to be like, oh, right, oh, come on, I, I disagree. This is why, and, and I'm reading it and I'm like, yeah, okay, that's actually a fair point. That's a, that's a totally cool thing I didn't think about. Please tell me and feel free if that's something you want to bring to the table. I'd love a discussion on this. The single player versus multiplayer thing has been going on quite a lot when it comes to world and whether new players should be doing it, at least in the Monster Hunter communities that I am a part of. So, yeah, I I'd love a lot of your thoughts on that. So, another couple little tips that I would just like to impart while I'm here. I don't want to do anything too specific or technical because I want to make actual guides and proper bits of information and stuff, but in the general sense, when you first start playing, be it solo or multi, take your time and slow down and gather. Yes, gather. As soon as you can, free roam on the maps, run round it, explore it, get to know the lay of the land, and gather. Get as much honey, as much blue mushrooms, as much of the insects, as many materials for crafting as you can. You will thank me later in the game because the beta gave you traps and knives and all manner of uh, tools to fight the monster. You don't get them in the real game by default. You have to make them. You have to gather the raw ingredients and you have to craft them. So if you spend a little bit of time earlier on in the game just getting a huge supply of all of these things and just having a base, you won't have your Nerd Gigante hunt get halted because you've got to take a quick trip to the jungle and find a few stacks of honey. Obviously, it doesn't really matter when you do this, but it doubles up as giving you an early on, oh, look at this environment as you learn where things are, discover the base camps, unlock the fast travel points and just get stuff, but it will just help you out. You'll also passively gather stuff that you'll need for early on equipment, crafting, and weapon upgrades. It's just a really nice way to give you a solid foundation. And then extending on that, talking about taking it slow, whenever you do fight a new monster, again, whether it's a pair of your three or your solo, whatever, don't just immediately run at it, start slashing, and then being like, oh, this thing's ridiculous, it's just killing me, because of course it will. When you face a new monster, do it with a little bit of trepidation. Do it like a hunter, because inherently that's one of the reasons why I do recommend the solo experience, because one thing that Monster Hunter is really, really known for, and what makes it so satisfying to me and many other people, is that the biggest form of progression is personal player skill. Your ability and knowledge as a hunter is essentially what decides 90% of a fight. There's no way to just, you know, air quotes, out gear a monster, at least not in the extreme. If you have the very best and then go fight a Jagras, you'll, you'll stomp it. But, you know, in the general sense, your player skill is the deciding factor in a fight. And you don't kind of get the feel, the knowledge, the ability, to combat something if you're just kind of bum-rushing it with three of your mates and murderizing it down before it can really do kind of much of anything or any of its signature abilities or really be much of a threat and that's something I feel like you're robbing yourself of a definitive sense of personal growth 
because you're not doing it in a personal manner. I, I think that actually is kind of a nice way to put it. But either way, when you do fight a new monster, try and get that knowledge without having him slap you around. Dodge him for ages. Watch him. I say ages. A few minutes, five minutes. You know, don't go crazy. But, you know, watch his moves. See where his openings are. Make a note of, ah, when he turns his head to the left, he'll do a smash over there and then he'll be still for a few seconds and then I can go get a few pokes. Go get a few pokes. I'm like, cool, I got away with that. Let me run away, sheath. Have another bit of observe and slowly layer up and build up your aggression. Don't just go freaking ham at everything you see and then just get your ass beat because you're just giving into the monster's aggression and trying to have a slug match when you're not supposed to be taking it like that. A lot of this might be bloody obvious, and I might be sounding like I'm a being a like condescending twat, and I apologize if that's the case. It's just, I see so many people be like, I just don't get it, I can't kill this thing, I don't understand, I'm like running up to it, I'm hitting it, and it does this move, and it's not dodgeable, and I ask them to explain the move, I ask them to tell me how does the monster move, where does it hit, how are you trying to dodge it, and they're like, I, I don't know, he just does a slam, and I, I take damage, and I'm like, well, that's your first mistake, maybe step back, maybe watch the slam, and when you understand how it moves itself, maybe you'll be like, oh yeah, I was stood there and that's that's how I'm being caught, all right. And I just think that really helps to actually almost roleplay, not as, not as literally as that, but get in the mindset of your hunter. Fight like a hunter would with knowledge, tactics, and an awareness that an animal doesn't have, and you'll find yourself having a much cooler experience. Use your environments, use your supplies, and really bring the patient fury to the monster. So yeah, that's my kind of starter guide for a mentality on getting the most out of a Monster Hunter work game, at least from my personal experience and what works for me. Obviously, everyone's different, none of this might be helpful for you, and I might have just wasted a lot of my life, but I'm, I'm used to doing that. <laughs> it's so sad. Sorry, sorry, that's, that's not for now. Uh, uh, I, I say that's not for now, like, coming up soon, a video where I just talk about depressive shit to do with me. Oh, yes. Oh, my God. But, yeah, world coming out so, so very soon. Going to be fantastic, and I can't wait to see you guys on the hunt. Like if you've enjoyed this, subscribe for more, and I will see you very soon. A oh, good boy. Rage gaming with the video float. But that's all that's really relevant at the mo. But I'm still gonna leave this up so you patrons know that I love you even though the outro's no longer that kind of relevant. But the new one's being worked on and it's gonna be a truly badass song. And don't worry, I won't be doing any rapping on it. I'm gonna go now. Uh, this was shit.